Hello, I'm Chris Wellsby and I'm the CEO of ETF Securities. Today I'm here to talk to you about two of the funds within our future present range, which for me is one of the most exciting ranges uh, within the fund management space in Australia. The reason why is it touches on technology and all the different aspects of technology. So the two funds that I'll be speaking to you about today are firstly our Robotics Automation and Artificial Intelligence Fund. The, the ticker on that is Robo, R-O-B-O. And the reason I like that fund is because it's a frontier fund capturing all the most advanced changes that are happening in our world right now. And then I'll be talking about our FANGS Plus ETF. And this is a more mainstream global innovators fund um, that we've launched recently in the last three or four months. So the reason why technology is so important for Australian investors uh, is A, obviously to capture technology within a portfolio because it makes such a difference um, to the way that we live our lives, etc. But also in Australia, there isn't actually that much uh, representation of technology. As you can see from the chart, it's way lower than what the normal global allocation to technology is. So really Australians need to look offshore. If you invested domestically, you're just not getting that exposure. Now, we know about technology and why, how important it is because it is part of our lives. We see it with our phones, we see it with our laptops, we see it with Zoom as part of this, uh, you know, living with COVID, et cetera, et cetera. But I just wanted to give you a couple of statistics um, as to how dramatically it has changed our world even over the last decade. Um, so you can see on the top line there, 60% of the uh, global population use the internet. If you can look down to the bottom left, you can actually see that 90% of people between 16 and 64 watch online videos and actually almost 70% of people are now streaming. And if you look at the far right, you can just see the growth of retail in e-commerce. So that's, that's companies like Amazon. This is not going to stop, it's going to continue. And we all know this, but it's, it's dramatic when you actually see the figures in front of you. But it's not just about shopping and watching TV. There's also things that are changing our, the quality of our lives. So I've been talking to you about robotics and automation for the next couple of minutes, but I'd like to focus briefly on battery technology. That's with electric vehicles. Um, we've all seen the Teslas more and more around, around the streets of Australia, and that's only set to grow as people become more and more aware of pollution. And you can see at the bottom of the chart there just how little pollution Tesla's cars give relative to a normal combustion-based engine. And then biotechnology. I keep saying about COVID, but COVID is clear and present for us now. And those vaccines, when a vaccine is produced, it will, it will cure us all from something that's actually completely changed the way that we live our life at the moment in terms of the lockdown that we've recently had. So Robo, um, this, this product um, is being produced uh, so that we, do, we can capture the very latest technologies in robots, automation and artificial intelligence, which most people understand and realise is changing all aspects of our life. But I don't think they realise how broadly it is used. So here we split robotics, automation and AI into 12 different sectors. There's ones for the actual technology, which are the inner part of the uh, circles here, and then the application. So many people don't think about robotics and AI in, in terms of food and agriculture or things like healthcare, but actually uh, robots and AI are prevalent in all areas of the world. This particular fund, being aware of the fact that there are different technologies that are having differing levels of success depending on how uh, mature and developed they are. This fund has a two-tier equal weight system. So that the bellwethers, the companies that are fully into robotics and AI and are unlikely to change um, in the short term, um, so they will remain present within that fund for a long period of time, they get a 2% allocation each um, and there are 20 of them. And then the ones that are more frontier, the ones that have got more emerging technologies, we give them approximately a 1% allocation each. There are about 90 companies in the fund, making sure that it's very, very diversified so that the fortunes of one company don't bring down the rest. And you can see some of the names that you will probably know, like iRobot, 
So iRobot, when you go into JB Hi-Fi and you look at automated vacuum cleaners, there'll probably be uh, one in two of those will be from iRobot. In terms of performance, uh, we can see this, uh, our particular fund that we track set against a, another index, and you can see that it's done pretty well against competitor index that's also tracking uh, robotics. And then in terms of the breadth of coverage, we've already discovered, discussed the industry classification, but the geography is very important as well because it's not just based on the US. It's actually very broad. It's a true global thematic fund. And interestingly, on the market capitalization uh, side as well, um, it is really roughly in three parts, uh, third, 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 large, mid and small. So it's getting good elements from all the different areas of, of companies in terms of their size. The last thing I'd say about this very briefly is uh, Robo, this particular fund, has an investment committee of professionals. So they're entrepreneurs within the arena or academics that actually select these companies. And once these companies are selected in a big pool, then the ETF uh, quantitative system, uh, whereby we, we select them by equal weight, put them into bellwether, put them into different categories, is, is, put, is put on top of the uh, selection every quarter. So this is not just uh, um, a computer going into the market and selecting the stocks, it's actually humans with deep knowledge of the industry selecting these companies. And then moving on to the more mainstream uh, technology companies that we all know, this is why we launched the FANG Plus ETF. And this ETF was really done because of Australian demand. We were, we were at many different events and Australian investors were saying to us, the reason they're investing offshore is to get exposure to the FANGs. I and mean, they can do that in a lot of different ways, in broad funds where, the, where FANG stocks are you know, a small proportion, or they can buy single stocks, the companies themselves. But we thought, well, if we can just bring out a fund that does that for them, um, then it should actually meet a lot of the, uh, the demand of, of what Australian investors want. So this, this particular ETF, the uh, ticker code, the ASX code is FANG, covers all the main FANG companies that you know, uh, that you can see on the screen. But it also covers some that are outside America, making it truly global, ones like Bardu and Alibaba that are not captured normally just by the standard of FANG categorization. And also just for people to be aware that these companies are really, truly massive. The total of these 10 companies market capitalization is four times the size of the ASX 200. So all people should really be considering taking exposure to, to this type of, these types of companies because they're so big, they, they cannot be ignored. Just in terms of the index me methodology, similarly to Robo, we have an equal weighting system here to make sure that companies like Tesla and Twitter, that any performance returns that they have are not dwarfed by Google and Amazon. And we find that this works very well in practice. As you can see from the performance on the chart in front of you, over a back-tested period of five years, you can see that this FANG index has outperformed all of the main indexes that you would probably compare it against by a serious margin. Um, this doesn't mean that they will in the future, but it gives you some indication of the fact that actually a lot of the returns in the market globally have actually been driven by these, by these particular companies. And lastly, in terms of where you would put it in your portfolio, there are two real main ways. With Robo, we only see clients using that as a satellite. That means on the outside of their portfolio, maybe two to 5%. With FANG, you can use, either use it as a satellite as well, but we're seeing many, many investors actually putting it as a core part of their portfolio. And what that means is they're allocating between 15 to 30% to this fund because they believe that those companies are the primary drivers of growth in their portfolio and they want, that they want to make sure that it's the foundational element of their portfolio. Thank you very much for your time. Um, if there are any questions, uh, you have the details for us to contact on the page right now. Thank you very much.